This is CKMS, 102.7 FM in Waterloo Region, RadioWaterloo.ca on the web. Like what you hear? Why not drop a line at www.radiowaterloo.ca Or if you would like to request a song, check out Radio Waterloo on Facebook and Twitter. Or call us at 519-884-2567. You are listening to the new 102.7 CKMS-FM. Oh man. What's got you down there, DJ Denim? I'm totally bummed. I never got accepted into my broadcasting program. Aw, buddy. That sucks to hear. Why not? Just applied a little too late this year, you know? Yeah, man, I hear ya. But sometimes, life can get bad. But it's not always bad, because here at CKMS, we can help you out. Really? That'd be awesome. Yes, of course, really. We've been serving the community for the past 40 years. That's how long we've been providing a voice for folks like you in our community. Just check out RadioWaterloo.ca and click on the Start a Show tab. Well, thank you, Radio Waterloo. CKMSFM. Rockin' Waterloo. This is Mr. K, the host of My Audio Face. From Cambridge, Ontario, and you're listening to the Underground Sound Project, right here on 102.7 CKMS Radio Waterloo. Afternoon. This is CKMS Wide World of Motorsports right here on 102.7 CKMS FM, the sound of the community for 40 years. This is DJ JD coming at you live until about 2 p.m. today. You were listening to us on 102.7 on the FM dial in the 519 Rogers Digital 946 in Southern Ontario or www.radiowaterloo.ca slash listen worldwide and mobile friendly. Make sure you give us a like and a share for each and every one of those mediums. Make sure you check us out as well on Instagram. CKMS FM Radio Waterloo. CKMS WWOM. And and I think that's the same on YouTube as well. So check us out and subscribe to us on there. Hit the bell button on the top right corner on YouTube so you can follow us when we have our live streams maybe some of our uh, on demand content whatever else that we'll have on the way in the next coming weeks and it's been quite uh, an, a weekend for us we uh, it just did a couple things on the show today it was the two races in Iowa Speedway this past weekend for NASCAR Camping World Truck Series and NASCAR Xfinity Series as well as some other news in the racing world up in Canada, uh, we were at Jucasa Motor Speedway uh, for the rank, I think it was the Rankin Construction 200, and it was a fantastic and beautiful weekend, and we got to speak to some people. We got to speak to Vic Venus, who is a uh, crew member of Canada's Best Racing Team. Uh, we saw him working on some cars uh, and, and, and helping out back in the, the, the paddock. And it was so cool to be able to talk to him. He hello ladies to me. It was so awesome. And uh, to be able to talk to him and to be able to actually cross off a couple uh, lists, things on my list. I wanted to talk to him for uh, through the ropes for many years. And now got to talk to him for Wide World of Motorsports. Kind of got to uh, kill two birds at once with one stone. I think I saw at once. <laughs> and then we also talked to... The podium, the first place finisher, Alex. Sorry, I wish it was tags. First place finisher, Kevin Lacroix. 
second place finisher Cole Powell and third place finisher Alex Taglani. And we also spoke to the one of the new inductees to the Kitty and Race Hall of Fame, DJ Kennington as well. So that, that'll be up on the way just in a little bit. But first, some news from the wide world of motorsports. And a very sad and somber note, uh, former Pro Mazda driver Jeff Green has succumbed to injuries that he sustained at a um, historic Formula 5000 race at CTMP uh, that happened Saturday night. The 61-year-old uh, who placed, who raced in Pro Mazda as recently as last year started the Vintage Automobile Racing Association of Canada Vintage Grand Prix from Pole from his Lola T300. For reasons not yet uh, that they have un- uncovered, is the car left the track at turn 8 of CTMP's 10-turn road course and made a hard contact with the wall. Uh, witnesses say that it looked like where he should have been braking. Um, obviously he wasn't, so maybe there was a mechanical failure or something else. They'll obviously be finding that out. Um, Green, who was a car dealer in his native Peora, Illinois, was attended to by medical crews and transported by ambulance to Lake Ridge Health Bowmanville Hospital, but was pronounced dead. Uh, he is survived by his wife, Pam, who had also attended the event along with his son and daughter. Uh, terrible to hear that they wanted to come enjoy a Father's Day in our beautiful country, and, and they had to come, and, and that had to happen. So thoughts and prayers. Of course, with uh, the, f- the family, the friends, uh, the co- other, the other drivers, and of course the track workers, that uh, you know they did uh, they did the missing man uh, tribute lap. Uh, they actually canceled some of the other events uh, from the uh, the vintage uh, races, and, and they did a, a touching tribute. And, and uh, you can check that online. The CTMP said that they're uh, deeply saddened by the loss. Uh, it's it's ab- absolutely tragic that happened as well as like such a close track um, but nonetheless and on a lighter note and in NASCAR Camping World Truck Series news there was quite a I guess it was a cool race on Saturday night an Iowa driver won in his home state at Iowa and uh, after a last lap move is very thrilling. We'll help him find sponsorships where he needs. And uh, Moffitt, who won the race late Saturday night, who's 25 years old, led 76 laps for his second victory of the season uh, in his number 16 truck. And he did start 16, the lowest spot on the grid, for a race winner this year. And Gregson, uh, who was trying to execute a Carl Edwards video game move on the final lap, I uh, thought thought we knew that didn't work but Gregson did blow and briefly uh, passed him off in the last turn of the race and uh, it was it was easy for uh, for at that point for Moff to take off. Harrison Burton was third followed by David Gilland and Johnny Sauter who was seeking his third straight win was fifth Sauter's lead in the standings took to 70 points over Gregson some intense stuff in the truck series and yesterday in Iowa for two races, uh, Justin Allgaier won all three stages of the Xfinity race Sunday, and it was the second victory of the season, racing for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Motorsports, number seven Chevrolet Camaro. He led 182 of 250 laps, and also was lucky at a late uh, caution, which he overcame. And also, he won last month at Dover. Um, but because I guess there's an asterisk on that because of some penalties. Um, but uh, it was it was very hot. People were dealing with the heat. That was another big factor during the race. And despite that, all guys' dominance, Christopher Bell made him work towards the end of the race. And at times, it was closing in within at least a tenth of a second, taking a lead from him. But Daniel Hemrick uh, finished third, followed by Colt Custer and Brandon Jones. And Riley Hurst was sixth in his series debut. Points leader Elliot Sadler lost a tire at the end of stage one. He finished 28th and saw his lead dwindle just to four points. Um, as I said, uh, with Allgaier winning this race, gives him a legit win to seize the stay in the championship hunt. We'll see what happens in the next couple weeks to come. 
in uh, some of that world. I do believe... Uh, where's... I think the next race is at Sonoma for Monster Energy. Um, I know that uh, I'm always interested in some of the stuff that happens. Um, and I think they're, they're at Gateway. Well, I, I saw my road race. I'm always interested in road racing, so it's just going to be exciting to see that. Um, and then that's then they're at Gateway at night? So, no. Friday is the truck. No, Saturday is the truck race on FS1 at Gateway. And then on Sunday is Fox's last Monster Energy broadcast at Sonoma at 3 p.m. on one of the TSNs. I hope. Hopefully, it'll, other than that, you'll probably be able to log online and watch it if you subscribe to TSN. Because there's going to be all the World Cups. And that's going to be. Uh, it's going to be an issue for some sports, but we'll have all the uh, coverage from that next Monday, 1 to 2 p.m. right here on 102.7 CKMS FM. And uh, going into our final little segment here, we're lucky enough to be able to go to Jakarta Motor Speedway this past weekend to be able to come out and cover the Rankin 200 construction race. <laughs> And it was, it was great. Um, it was actually, the weather could not have gotten any better. And it, it was beautiful out. And Jukasa, which does have quite history, it's, it's Canada's crown jewel. It was open in 1966 as a dirt track. But the following year, when Bob Stack purchased the track, it was paved. And since then, Cayuga Speedway has become synonymous in history and uh, by fans, racers, and sponsors alike as one of Canada's premier racing facilities. And uh, Championship Racing is at its very finest, which has actually become a trademark for Cayuga. And um, its goal is to provide uh, basically one of the, those kinds of, basically those unforgettable kind of races, those races that you'll always remember. And uh, there's, there's some great stuff at, at, through the years at Cayuga. And it is Canada's largest oval track with a 5 8 mile paved oval. And generate, and actually, fans have been going there for a long time. There's been such races like the ASA, the Great America Truck Racing, CASCAR, NASCAR Bush North Racing Series, the Pinty Series, uh, IMSA, ARCA, tons of huge things. Uh, the track is hosted to many of the biggest names like Bobby Allison, Davey Allison, Dale Earnhardt, Junior Hanley, Don Biederman, Bill Elliott, Matt Kenseth, Alan Kulwicki, Mark Martin, Tony Stewart, Rusty Wallace, D.W., Bob Seneca, Dick Trickle, and many, many more to name. And uh, however, it doesn't stop to this day. Uh, there's We also see other things at the band, and we're going to actually be getting to playing some music after these interviews from some of the bands that have played, like Hip, Jeff Healy Band, April Wine, Dave Wilcox, Kim Mitchell, just to name a few that have played at Cayuga throughout the years. So we'll be playing some music from them. And um, now, it, it, last year, it was turned into a beautiful facility. Now it is a state-of-the-art facility, and they actually plan on making new, newer grandstands and actually adding a road course onto the facility. So that'd be really cool to see. Um, but that, that now they have also two events at uh, in the NASCAR Pinty Series schedule, and we were at the second race, first and second race of the Pinty Series, and we were able to catch up with some of the drivers. Um, it was quite the race this past weekend, um, and we ended up seeing the three lead most. There was a significant amount of the first 75 laps of the race, and the quad tags were there. The, they caught up from uh, a little bit from their qualifying and with the track changing and uh, Kennington was also a fast mover coming up there uh, so was Dumoulin and, and the first duel they added in these two duels and uh, after 75 laps there's one duel with a five minute break uh, and that start uh, basically it was like a competition caution and the 28 uh, was penalized for starting work too early um, the one was a little bit donezo earlier on the race and that Lacroix did beat off tags from the restart after that and he led uh up until after that. Ranger holding in at third after the restart. Three fell back after the restart to fifth. And Tags did pretty good at his pit stop on his first break. 
he had problems and resolve them. And um, what happened is, is everyone was racing hard until there was problems for the 47 on lap 141 with a flat tire. However, the team came back and actually they patched up, hats off to 47 for patching up that car very well and uh, made it run up to, they, they got back up to the top 10 as far as I know. And um, the number 27, his, his tire went down lap 188 and NASCAR overtime went into play here. Pit road was open, but everyone stayed out. Lap 204, green flag. Lacroix and the 18 were battling, but Lacroix had the better of it. And uh, we actually were able to speak to some of those drivers. Uh, here is what the podium had to say. Here is third place finisher, Alex Tagliani, the man. Oh, it's always a pleasure to be here with Tags, the man. He's third place finish today at Jucasa. Tell us, how was that like? It was good. I think uh, I'm pleased with the finish. Uh, I think, you know, the, the boys did a really good job on building this car. It was the first time we ran it here this morning, so I was a bit apprehensive on how the car was going to uh, to go around the track, but it shows how, how strong the team is and, uh, you know, where, where we were in CTMP and where we are now, it shows that we are strong. So we need to catch up on some points from, you know, the miss miss up that we had at ctmp but overall i'm uh, i'm very pleased with uh, with the way the championship has started going from the qualifying the track edition then and that track edition at the end of the race today what were some of the differences I, I think you know the the track gets tighter um with with uh with with weather and with the the temperature going down uh we made some changes i don't think we got it right um but overall i think the car was a little bit better than where it shows, I think, uh, you know, the the grunt out of the corner was pretty much, you know, like where we lacking. The misfire was penalizing us quite a bit. So hopefully uh, we're going to fix that for uh, Chaudière and um, we'll continue this, uh, this, this way for the rest of the year. Do you think that NASCAR should continue the dual brake things uh, with the future races th during this season? Uh, I... I... Uh, I mean, me, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer that uh, I think, you know, if, if you leave it to the teams to compete in the pits, I think also the crew is going to uh, um, get excited, you know, because there's, there's some incentives to them to be strong and they're competing in the, in the pit lane, we're competing on the track, so that would be fun. I know that, you know, for purpose of uh, keeping the cost low and the amount of people that we're bringing in the equipment, but I also think that um, we need to increase the, the strategy because, you know, like everybody does the same thing, right? And I'm, I'm also for allowing people to change tires when they want, uh, at, the, at the lap they want, and just battling with cars that have good tires, no tires. I think that's would, that, that would basically mix up a lot of the speed right. of the cars at certain times in the race and open up for more, sh more, more spectacles, I think, for, for the sure. fans. But, um, you know, we're for the next race in Jucasa, the second one, it's going to be open pit and full pit stop, okay. full live pit stop. So we'll see. But um, again, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a believer to get more strategy and allow people to do more things and, and, and less regulated, you know, because when everybody does the same thing, it's, it's a bit difficult. Sure. And finally, going on from now, your oval program starting at this race, what are some of the things that the team's got to do to work on that? Oh, I mean, this was the first time we put the car on track, so I think uh, we're, we're going to work on it. We're going to try to improve it. We're going to try to fine-tune some little things, but I think our, our biggest concern right now is the engine. In first practice, we had a big oil leak. Um, we finished uh, uh, the race with, uh, with, with a misfire in the engine, it, it, it was really not pulling very well. So um, that's what they need to make sure that the engine is right, you know, sure. for the next race. Hopefully everything is correct inside, but you know, I, I believe that the team will do a good job. Well, all the best to you at Autodrome Show de Air and good luck. Thanks, buddy. Thank you very much. Take care. Here I am in victory lane with second place finisher Cole Powell. Cole, you were leading a good chunk of that beginning of the race, and after that restart on the duel, you fell back to fifth, but you battled your way up. How was that? Yeah, you know, we had a really good car in the first segment, and I picked up a, a vibration in the tires, and we really didn't want to pit, but we had to just in case the, uh, the right front was blistered, and it was one of those deals. But uh, fell back to seventh. Uh, the crew gave me really good adjustments on the second stop. 
Um, had a hell of a car, drove up from seventh, uh, seventh to second. Last restart, spun the tires a little bit. It's such a, a funny game with starting third. You never know when to really go and when not to. And um, Taglianli got in there and then got by him, luckily, to get second. And it, I, I, I want to be mad at second, but I can't. I really wanted to win that. And uh, we're, we're going in the right direction here this year. I think we're going to be able to do something special. What do you think about those race breaks today? Do you think that's something NASCAR Canada should implement in future races? Yeah, I think that was really, uh, I mean, really, I think it might have been a pretty boring race without those breaks because it was so spread out and uh, they were, yeah, it was just spread out. So I think the mandatory cautions were a good idea to bunch it up for the fans. Um, fans love to see that. So um, it brings better racing rather than just single file. So I'm a fan for it. All right. Well, congratulations on your second place finish. Good luck at Toronto. Good deal. Thank you. Thanks. Here I am in victory lane with race winner Kevin Lacroix. Congrats, Kev. Now, what did it take for you to be able to battle back uh, from the field? And not only that, what was the difference between the qualifying, the, the condition of the track and qualifying, and the condition of the track at the end of the race? Yeah, we, uh, you know, it was, uh, we thought about last year, and we qualified ninth, and we, we worked on the car to get it better for the race, and uh, that's what... Uh, we were looking for uh, today, you know, the, it was, the sun was uh, very hot today and track uh, condition changes a lot. So we, uh, even if we were not really fast in practice and qualifying, we were uh, expecting to have a really, really good car for the race. And uh, that's why, uh, you know, we, I was not very stressed uh, before the race. Uh, I was very confident and uh, it proved it to, that the car was very, really great. So nice, uh, nice work from the team and uh, to get that uh, oval win finally, it's nice. Going forward for the Oval program from now, what are some of the work that the team's going to have to do to improve for the next, for the rest of the season and the New Hampshire race? My team, you say? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, we need to be uh, more consistent, really. Uh, last year, we uh, you know, we were uh, fast uh, almost all year round, but uh, some tracks we were a little bit, uh, it was a little bit tough, uh, like uh, Toronto and Mirabel. We were... Uh, not the fastest car. We find uh, we we won, but uh, you know the speed wasn't quite there. Give me fuel, give me uh, fire, give me so that for sure this year, this year uh, you know, the luck may not be always on our side like uh, last year. So we have to uh, to keep improving and not. Uh, you know, we were leading the all race uh, on the first race. Now second race we win. Uh, we have to keep working and not uh, think about uh, what we've done. And have to think about what we what's coming. From going on now, going back to another road course in a month. What are some of the things that you guys are going to do? Uh, we went uh, next race is at uh, Autodrome Chaudière, and we went test there uh, two weeks ago, and the uh, car was great. So uh, again, we're very confident of, uh, for that race, and uh, you know, we I think we have some. Uh, even though we w we won four of the five races on the uh, road course last year, uh, we have uh, some work to do on the car, and uh, that's what we we will be working on. All right. Well, all the best to you, and congrats. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would like to thank all three of those gentlemen for giving me the time to be able to speak. Thanks to Tags, Cole Powell, and Kevin Lacroix for speaking with me. And we have these two gentlemen up next. I spoke with the newly inducted Canadian Hall of Famer, DJ Kennington, and Monster Energy NASCAR Cup driver as well. Here's what he had to say. Here I am in pit lane with DJ Kennington, who is just coming back from last week from Michigan from the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series. Now he's at the beautiful Jucasa. DJ, tell me, how is it like getting that sixth place finish today? Uh, not what we wanted, but uh, after bringing out a brand new race car today that's never seen the racetrack till today, uh, we can't complain. We were really good in the first half of the race and made some adjustments there, and it didn't work. So uh, we went the wrong way, and it didn't get very good at the end of the race, but um, we'll take it and move on to the next one. Compared to going from a cup car in these cars, what are some of the differences? Just horsepower, weight, um, mainly track size. Right. Uh, I mean, the cup cars are so heavy. The uh, radial tires have so much more grip. Um, there's a ton of difference. It's just uh, uh, speeds are way higher. Uh, it, it makes my job here, uh, I guess you would say, easier because um, everything kind of happens slower and uh, you can react sooner. So I think just down there, it gives me more seat time. It gives me a better feel for a race car. And it's like playing hockey or golf or anything else. The more you play, the better you get. Last week, you were coming out of turn two, and you there was a, some sort of like a slower car in the straightaway. What was that like? That was like crazy watching at home. Yeah, the 17 car had an issue there and spun around. And my spotter told me to go high. And 
So I, I hammered the brakes, and when I got on the brakes to go high, the car started to spin out, so I, I kind of had to go to the bottom. And, right. You know, it, it looked real close on TV, but uh, it wasn't that close right. out there. I mean, I had probably 30, 40 feet. So, right. um, but when it's 180 mile an hour, things happen in a hurry. Oh, yeah. And so finally, one more question. Going on from now for the Oval Program, and then we're looking at New Hampshire at the end of the year, what are some of the things that the team is going to do to improve? Uh, we just got to get our car better now. Uh, now we have it built, and it's all in one piece, and we can go home and work on it now, and uh, I think we can definitely make it better. And uh, The more uh, time we get on it, the better it'll get, and uh, hopefully by the end of the year or, you know, hopefully by race three or four we've got this thing figured out and we can go win some. Well, with you being in the Hall of Fame, I'm sure that was a pretty cool honor for you. Yeah, um, just really cool to be there with my dad. Uh, only the, I think the second father and son team in there but now because Jacques Villeneuve is going in this year. So with, right. to be even mentioned with the Villeneuve's in racing, that's pretty cool. And uh, just proud of all of our accomplishments. And uh, my dad told me that uh, I did it 26 years sooner than he did. <laughs> and uh, the only reason I did that was because of him. So right, yep. um, I've had a lot of help along the way. And it's a true honor. And um, I mean, I'm only 40 years old, but uh, I've done a lot of racing. Well, thank you very much, and for also providing a good influence in the American Series and giving us a spot on the map. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. All righty. I am here at Jucasa Motor Speedway. We're going to do a bit of a mix of CKMS Wide World of Motorsports and Through the Ropes. We are here with Vic Venus. Vic, tell me, what's it like being here at a NASCAR race? Hello, ladies. Damn. That's the, what it's like being here. All the ladies. They're going crazy right now for Vic. <laughs> um, now, we got a couple of things today. First off, how, what's it like being a tire changer? You're a tire changer, right? Ty I do multiple jobs. Tire changer, fuel man, jack man. Whatever, whatever needs to happen, I do. So for the Team 25, what's it like for you being on that end, giving that hustle? What's the differences between the wrestling gig and this gig? You know what? As you get older, you appreciate life a little more, and this is uh, just as much as a rush as um, as wrestling is, no question. I mean, wrestling's uh, treated me real good. Had a lot of fun doing it, and still love doing it, but uh, this is absolutely, uh, it's like another level, in all honesty, when you are going over pit wall, and it's you in the car, and it's all timed, and you know, you gotta go as fast as you can, and you gotta be spot on. Uh, that's pretty exciting. So, you know, you got a matter of, you know, 12, 14 seconds to, you know, four tires in fuel, and then, uh, and gone again. So everything's gotta be spot on, and just like wrestling. You know, and that's probably why I like this so much. It's uh, I'm a mechanic by trade and my real job, so to speak. And uh, so obviously I like doing mechanics, and it's great to be around cars at the top level of NASCAR. Um, took a long time to get here, but I'm, I'm glad that I'm here. And, um, you know, the team's amazing. Um, yeah, and hopefully, you know, Raja Costa, one of my favorite racetracks, has done a beautiful job at this place. So I can't wait to see what happens tonight. So, How did you get started off in NASCAR? Uh, lucky being a mechanic, you always got friends who are into uh, race cars, so it's, you know, they always follow me and it's like, oh, can you give me a hand on my car? And then one thing leads to the next and sometimes it's about who you know too. And then, you know, some teams need some hand or needed a hand doing some stuff. So you go kind of try out for a team or whatever and, you know, do your thing. And they're like, okay, we need you. So, <laughs> and that's about it. So then one thing led to the next, you know, I just, uh, I take it pretty serious. I mean, this is the top level of racing, you know, in, uh, in Canada, no question. And uh, I'm glad to be here and, I'm, you know, I'm glad the teams like what I do for them. And I like working for all these guys. So. Some of the other people in other crews and whatnot, do they know not to mess around with your team because you're on it? Oh, yeah, I get ripped all the time. So, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, you get ripped all the time. It's like today, you know, the guy's like, oh, I thought a big wrestler would push that car harder, <laughs> you know, through tech lane or whatever. So, yeah, you get ripped a fair bit, but uh, it's all good. We have a lot of fun, so. Well, you never know when you have to throw someone in a finisher move, right? Uh, it wouldn't be the first time. That's been done already, so. <laughs> Especially if somebody takes us out tonight, so. Well, you never know. Well, actually, what do you think is going to come up top? Obviously, you think 25 is going to come up top, but what are some of the other cars you're looking out for tonight? Uh, obviously, Tags. Uh, Alex Tagliani's pretty good, and uh, Kevin LeBois. They're always real good. DJ, of course, DJ Kennington, uh, you know, right from Canada here. He's having great success, you know, uh, south of the border and stuff like that with uh, some of the truck teams and the car teams down there. So he's... Uh, you know, he's doing amazing. So DJ's always, uh, he's always at the top of his game, no question. And uh, there's great teams here. So we, uh, but that, that's probably the guys that I'd probably be worried the most about. And then uh, other than that, I think we're pretty much ready to go. So we can't wait to see what happens tonight. Well, hopefully you guys get a win tonight. What are some of the things that you might be doing tonight after the race? You know what? It's a nighttime race, so we've had a busy, busy day uh, trying to get uh, that one but two cars ready, and, uh, and they're ready to go. Had a few little uh, hiccups here and there. We got them all dialed, and uh, so I think once it's done and the haulers packed up, 
I'm going to sleep. <laughs> that's probably a good idea, yeah. Yeah, so no, that's what I'll be looking forward to, you know, and just have a nice cold bottle of water after the, after the race and stuff, and then, uh, yeah, you know, lights out for me. <laughs> and finally, between going now and the next race, are you going to be at the Honda Indy in Toronto? Absolutely. I absolutely love the Indy. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. uh, I've been going there for a couple of years now. There's so much stuff to do down there, uh, and not only for fans, but for kids and stuff too. And uh, I'm a kid kind of guy, you know, myself, but there's so much to do. So uh, just a little shout out to the promoters of the Honda Indy. Anybody out there is listening to this, make sure you bring your kids out there. It's oh, yeah. absolutely incredible. Honda's got the ride center down there for all the kids to start off on motorcycles and stuff. It's, it's an amazing atmosphere down there. So amazing to be part of that. Well, uh, all the best to you and your future endeavors. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks. See you around. And that was one of the top interviews. Let us say that I wanted to throw my interview with Thick Venus in my top ten. That was that was awesome. Uh, thank you for Vic and DJ Kennington for giving me their time. And uh, even at one point there, talking to DJ and Junior was running away there. Uh, <laughs> oh, what was what was going on there? That was something interesting too. So that was that was great. Uh, got. Got a lot of great stuff out of that event, you know, like thank Jucasa, Alex Nangui, and all the great employees that work at Jucasa for putting together such a great event. And uh, as always, it's a pleasure. Looking forward to that event in September. Make sure you check out the website, Jucasa Motor Speedway. And, uh, you know, it, there's a lot of stuff that goes on there. There's a lot of cool stuff. Kim Mitchell's playing there in a couple months. Just make sure you go check them out. And uh, not only that, speaking of that, we were actually going to be playing some music from Kayuga over the years. Uh, unfortunately, not live, but playing some of the bands. Here's Blow It High Dough by Tragedy Hip, right here on CKMS Wide World of Motorsports. Don't touch that dial. We're on for another half an hour. And, wow. We were just listening to Jeff Healy Band, which is a song from Foot or Roadhouse. <laughs> Footloose Roadhouse. When the Night Comes Falling from the Sky, which I believe is a cover song from Bob Dylan. And then, Kim Mitchell, Go For Soda, April Wine, Sign of the Gypsy Queen, David Wilcox, A Bad Apple, and to kick it all off, we had Blow It High Dough by the Tragedy Hip, and uh, those are some of the bands that have played at Cayuga, or Jukasa, Motor Streetway throughout the years. Um, too bad it wasn't any like master recordings or anything like that from live performances I could have played. But nonetheless, it was cool to be able to play some of the bands and give some of the fancy ideas, some of the great Canadian artists and legends that have performed and continue to perform at that track. So make sure you check that out online. Make sure you get tickets for some shows. Take your family down the summer uh, for some nice time. And, uh, no, well, I guess that wraps it up for another edition of CKMS Wide World of Motorsports. I'd like to thank our podium from this past weekend. Alex Tagley, Annie, Cole Powell, and Kevin Lacroix. I would also like to thank NASCAR legend and, of course, newly inducted Canadian Race Hall of Fame, DJ Kennington. And I'd like to give a huge thanks for Vic Venus for giving me a classic and a great time, a good laugh, a classic interview. Thank you very much. Uh, that, was, that was cool to be able to put him towards his theme song and play that, you know, this guy. Don't mess with him, man. If that team messes up, he will screw you up. He will put you in a finisher. You don't want to be, you don't want to be done, so. <laughs> but I'd like to thank all of them for giving me the time. Of course, the people at Jocasta Motor Speedway for letting us come out. Alex Nanke uh, and uh, some of the other folks. Uh, thank you very much. Check out, check out. <laughs> Uh, check out some of the other great content. I don't want to give away the name of my competition, but it's nice to be able to, to hang out with some of the photographers and other people as well. Uh, shout out to the people at Can Race, I suppose. <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, check check them out. And then check us out first and follow us first at CKMSWWOM. Um, and, of course, uh, it was great to be able to go there for Wide World Motorsports and Unforgettable NASCAR. Make sure you check out Unforgettable NASCAR on Facebook. Come talk to us. Share your love for the sport. And while you're on Facebook and Twitter, check out Radio Waterloo, where you can follow some cool stuff there. And www.radiowaterloo.ca. You can listen to us worldwide and mobile-friendly. And, of course, Rogers 
Digital Cable, Channel 946 in Southern Ontario, and 102.7 on the FM dial. Uh, that is it for another edition. Um, I'd just like to thank everybody for tuning in. You know who you are. For everyone, take care of yourselves and each other. Spade in your pets helps show the pet population. Always remember to get a designated driver. Don't drink and drive. Don't text and drive. Make sure you always look up your workers and your human rights. Lock your doors at night. And of course, for the working man and the working woman, there is no opposition to the genius switch. That is the bottom line, folks. We'll see you next week on CKMS Wide World of Motorsports, Mondays, 1 to 2 p.m., right here on CKMS FM, the sound of the community for 40 years. Up next, one of the final underground sound projects, folks. Stay tuned. <laughs>